Ah, as you can see for yourself, Captain, we're still struggling with the concept of shared leadership. Please, come back later. You can consult our Pekonk Queen on Gamma Serpentis 1 in the meanwhile. Okay, so we get to talk to a Pekonk for the first time, I guess, on Gamma Serpentis Planet 1, the home planet. Let's see what happens. I trust you don't mind my bypassing regular channels to talk to you directly. It is wonderful to see you again. In a way, yes. We spoke from the heart there, all as one, one speaking as all. I spoke to you then, from my heart, though I wasn't really aware of it at the time, and I'm not sure what we said, but yes, we did. Okay, so here's the Pekunk. Uh, of course, we have to thank you first of all, obviously, for helping us against Sumatra. They were the best against Sumatra. Their ships were so epic, they just couldn't get hit. It was so good. Yes, yes, that was quite important. And thank you for your guidance on the timing of our return. Right, that's good. Um, we weren't lying, they really were very useful. They were really, really good. Uh, but he could use my Ouija board. That is probably the most important thing to tell the Kunk. Ah, he a joker. Next you'll be telling me the month of the bloody moon is coming up. I didn't hatch yesterday, you know. I was looking for an excuse to turn that fleet around just then. Say, I heard one of your human jokes. Would you like to hear it? So it goes. A rabbi, a Nietzschean transhumanist, and a length of rope walk into a bar on a damaged spaceship that's about to crash. No, wait. The rabbi is dyslexic. Hmm. Or was it Spinoza instead of the rope? Right. Okay. Well, whatever you say. Um... What are we even talking about? I, I thought we meant to, what were we meant to talk. I can't even remember why we came here now. We just came here to talk to the Yehat and the Bakunk, I think. Um, I completely forgot the Bakunk were here. Um, let's talk about more important things. What do you think about the new alliance? Uh, yeah, more important matters. Business. I get a lot of that these days. Well, I guess you're the head of the Bakunk and the Yehat now. That's pretty important. Um, what do they think of the new alliance? That's a good question. What do they think of how it's going? It's way better than utter annihilation. It's very true. The way we're being sidelined by the Chmer is just a snip of bitter root in the steward life. I would very much have loved to engage with the Vux and treat them with the love they need to be free of their negativity, but not to be. And the Micon, well, as long as the planets they're rearranging aren't inhabited, well, they can do their thing too. Sure, they're a bit rough around the edges, could use a touch more loving kindness and consideration of the needs of others, but nobody's perfect. Some in this court welcome these decisions, but you know, Captain, that whatever happens, whoever you offend, and no matter the rules, as long as you look out for those on the bottom, as long as your compromises have heart, you're our friend. You're welcome here, even if you don't do those things, there will be somewhat less... Well, let's be honest, the Micon just talked absolute nonsense, they were never going to be any helpful, so... Uh, but we do need some help, some new Pekunk ships. The first thing to understand is that there is more than one universe. Not an infinite number, but quite a few. And many of them are in little groups, each related to the others in a sequence. Our world is in one of these, and in the later version, I will be able to give you more concrete advice. But with the wind as it is, this metacosmology lesson is all I have to offer. Well, thank you for that again, Bukunk. Very useful. You just don't help us. What is the use of you? Just goodbye. Go away. I don't care about you anymore because all they ever offer is just like, like information which is completely useless to us. They just don't help us at all. Bakunk ships, the best ship in the game against the Sumatra, and and they don't even give that to us. You only get four in the entire game. I think you get eight actually because you get four from the from the beginning. But you know why don't they just give us more ships? Surely it's easy for them to produce this little flappy butterfly ships. And they've now got the Yay Hat as well. Can we not have some Yay Hat ships? Some more of them? They were really good. We've got one, but surely we could do some, some more. Oh, wish they could just be a little bit more helpful. Uh, but we need to go over to um, the Janus, of course. Is that the Shafixti I think we're talking about? Go to Jamma. Gamma Janus Planet Planet 2, was it? I can't remember, was it? I think it was. So what's going on here, then? 
Cimmerian world. And there's an energy source. And a bunch of rubbish resources. But let's have a look at what this is. What on earth is going on down here? Save the game quickly. So. It's pretty cold. So I'm guessing it's not life. Oh my god, what the hell's that? It's like a snowman in the, the rock. Sir, we have not found any signs of the precursor artifact the Yehat suggested. Oh, it was the Yehat. Was it the Yehat? Yeah, it was the Yehat. Uh, the Yehat that we saw before we uh, went to the starbase and the home planet. The only e uh, weak energy is, is emanating from this imprint on the surface. It's definitely artificial. Shape and uh, matter flux suggest a spacecraft. Uh, based on Zanik Wack an analysis, Zanik, he's uh, a brilliant. Uh, he's also a good artist on the Explorer as well, on the Discovery Explorer or whatever. This is no more than a bit of whatever. Okay, so that's completely useless. Nothing there at all. And apparently there's no sign of anything around. So it's completely not very useful really. So we can't take anything from it. It's just, a, just an imprint on the ground of the, uh, of the planet. That was useful. Um, I'm going to go to these other places because I've just realised that we're going to have to actually start mining in these new star systems in order to actually um, actually get enough minerals to sustain however long this game is. Because I'm not sure if this game, because it's an alpha, I'm not sure if I'm meant to just sort of explore uh, exactly what it tells me to, or because I really want to see what they've added to the game, like all the different easter eggs. There's probably quite a few easter eggs. There's probably a lot to actually explore at this stage, but it looks like it's going to be tough on fuel, especially, um, to actually uh, get everywhere in, in the game um, so far. So we're going to have to actually go mining a bit. Here we go, this is a good planet to start mining at. Uh, so we're going to have to go and check out some of these new star systems. Um, I've always wondered how they make the planets and the, and the solar systems in this game, because uh, do they just... I don't really understand how it works. Do they just... Um, do they have to individually make each of the planets and what minerals they have on them, or do they just sort of have like a random generator, which basically um, basically randomly assigns certain elements depending on what type of planet it is? I've never really understood how that works. Uh, it'd be good to find out. There we are, there's a few basic things on that uh, on that planet. Planet 6 of Alpha Janus. Um, so, I think the way it's going to work is that um, fuel is 20, 20 per uh, fuel piece, a uh, fuel sort of uh, unit. Uh, and the blues, what are the blues worth? The blues are 4, the greens are 5, and the whites are 3. So we need to get like at least four or five, six, uh, six, uh, we need to get like four, five or six of each, uh, roughly, to get f per fuel unit. So we need to make sure that we we get that. And look, we've, we've got all of the technology from the Melnormi from the previous game. So we've got all of the uh, upgrades and things like that, which is pretty cool. So we can go faster and uh, it doesn't look like we can actually hold that much more um, in, our, in, the, in the lander. It doesn't actually look like we've got the double um, capacity. Uh, or let's test out. I don't think we've got the double shooting speed either. No, we haven't got that either. But um, we've got the uh, all the different resistances to fire, earthquakes, uh, bio data. Uh, well, to biology, life, and also lightning. Um, the lightning and the fire were really, really hard to dodge. I mean, the, the lightning is impossible to dodge pretty much. It just hits you, but it didn't hit you for that much. But the fire was unbelievable. I remember actually we died, I think, when we lost a lander back in Alpha Centauri because the, the fire just came across us just to be landed and just owned us. Um, and the, uh, the earthquakes were a lot easier to dodge. I remember like you could you could you could dodge if you're concentrating hard. You could dodge like class 5 uh, earthquakes most of the time. Um, unless you're unlucky and you, it sort of like exploded on you just as you landed. Uh, that is normally how you how your landers die, really, at the beginning of the game, is if you get unlucky with your placement. Because, of course, on the old Alpha Centauri, there was those two uh, planets with uh, loads of minerals on them, and they were really, really hot. And if you... Because uh, it's a sl slightly random area that you land in when you uh, click on the screen. And if you're not 
basically perfectly next to the uh, the exotic minerals. You have to go a couple seconds, and you can die in that time, and it's really really dangerous. But um, we're not collecting too much here. We've only got uh, one unit or one sort of uh, storage bay, uh, opposed to the three or four that we used to have back on the uh, whatever it was called, the Vindicator. I can't remember what I actually called. It. I think I called it the Nova Mace. Nova Mace actually comes from uh, Treasure Planet Battle at Procyon. If anyone's ever wondering, not many people know about that game at all, um, but Joe played it in his series, and that game is actually um, another space game, but Treasure Planet in uh, was actually a pretty good film, and they made a game out of it. Not as popular, but uh, I thought it was still pretty good. So uh, yeah, that's where it came from. <laughs>